Welcome back, everybody, to the Meeple Marathon. Today, we are going to take a look at Spirit Island, the iOS app. Now, uh, Spirit Island is a excellent solo game. Uh, has a lot of variety in the asymmetrical play of the spirits that you play on the island. It actually is kind of a uh, reverse of roles. Normally you uh, would play the humans fighting against the spirits. In this case though you play against the spirits of the island and the people coming to civilize the island I guess in terms and drive away the natives and um, you know squash the land of all of its spirits are the people you're trying to drive off. So it's a little bit of a reverse of roles, but there's some great asymmetrical choices in the game between all the different spirits you can play. <clears throat> and this app is actually appears to be free to download, and it is free to download. But all you get with the game is the tutorial mission, and then uh, I believe it's like the first six rounds of a game, which uh, are not enough to get you through a full game. Otherwise, you would have to pay uh, for the remainder of the game. So. Um, we are going to go through the tutorial mission because it is the best way to A, show you how to play the game, but B, show off the full amount of the game. If I were to only do, say, a quick play, then you'd only get to see six rounds. So here is just an introduction into the game. Uh, again, you are playing the spirits of the island, and you're trying to drive away the invaders who are attempting to colonize the island and kill the natives. Um... The natives are called the Dahan, and everything is upsetting the natural balance of things. So you play as uh, various spirits to dry them off. This is a game that you can play completely solo as a single spirit, or you can play cooperatively with someone else or play multi-handed. So let's just go ahead and jump into playing the tutorial here. Um, this is one that I have gone through, and I think they do an excellent job of teaching you the game. So if you have wanted to always get into Spirit Island, this may be a good jumping off point. I think the app uh, to pay for it in full is only about $10. So a uh, much cheaper price tag than, say, the 50 plus that you're going to pay for the game, the physical copy of the game. So here we go. All right. So let me see if I can zoom out here so you can see it all. Um, basically, she's just telling us here that there are various terrains, oceans, um, mark the edges, and in this case, there is actually only one ocean. So when the invaders come in, they will come in via the ocean. So even though the background is blue, I feel like they should have chosen a different background. Normally, it would be sitting on your table. Um, they're only going to come in from that left side of the board. So there's two jungle regions two mountain regions, two sands regions, and two wetland regions. You can adjust your view, zooming in, and that's it. All right, so here is the uh, game pieces. This is what they look like. They're natural wood, uh, very symbolic of a simple population, simple natives, and so they are represented by this natural color here. And this is the Dahan. And so every scenario starts you with pre-populating a certain amount of Dahan on the board. This is dependent on your player count and everything else. And then this is the Blight. So Blight is basically human influence and um, you know the negative effects of that human influence that can cause your your island and your spirits to wither away and die. So we don't want blight. Also, in this scenario, they have pre the invaders have already been here for a little while, so they have gone ahead and gotten some buildings up, um, some basically towns and cities represented by the two or three buildings. She's basically covering everything I just said. All right, so this is going through a scenario of kind of how the invaders uh, spread. Um, so first they explore in a random terrain. In this case, um, mountains and explorer is added to a mountain land with a source of invaders. Um, they're always going to come out of cities and towns. They don't just 
uh, spread out of the woodwork. Okay, so you can see that they built. <clears throat> Now they're going to explore again. So this would be a whole second round for them. And essentially why they both came from that one city is that a card, you're going to flip over a card to for the AI and it's going to be in the explore column and it would have said jungle. So they are going to explore the jungle if there is a jungle space adjacent to where they have influence. So they had that city there, they were able to come out of the city and explore. If it had been, um, say, wetlands, and there was not a city adjacent to the wetlands, they would not have been able to explore it, so. Okay, so here they're saying the mountains are in danger. Um, anytime you have um, people in an area, they will ravage it, which means they will you know, go to war with the Dahan. Sometimes the Dahan fight back, um, but it will also leave blight. And so all of this is going through the steps of showing you how the invaders are gonna spread, but they're not gonna spread at this pace. I felt like this portion of the tutorial made you feel like, oh my God, how in the world am I gonna win if every time the AI activates, they get these massive turns and blight was added and everything else. Um, and now they're building, but they're actually only going to take uh, an action in each category, build, explore, and ravage each turn. So what they're showing you now is, is basically multiple rounds, and I felt like this portion of the tutorial was a little excessive. <clears throat> Here they're basically just going through the whole ravaging step again. Um, blight is added to both jungle spots. As you can see, the cycle cycle is bad for the island, so we need to stop them. All right, so they're erasing all of that stuff. Now we get to see how the game is actually played. I felt like they could have skipped a lot of that step previously. All right, so River Surges in Sunlight. That is the name of the spirit we are uh, controlling. So you can see that you know it's got some special powers in the wetlands. Um, and basically every turn you are picking one of these actions, um, either you know this first one here, this middle one here, or this last one. And each of them give you different things, whether you adding certain presents or gaining power cards uh, or reclaiming your cards, which is important because these cards down here, one, two, three, four, once you've played them, go into a discard pile and you don't get them back until you reclaim them. So you can't just keep adding presences and uh, gaining power cards necessarily. You'll run out of um, energy to spend, so on and so forth. So also... Um, down here, you can see that, you know, you have a certain amount of speed, range. All this will make sense here in a minute. Um, so let's just follow along with the tutorial. We must drive away the, all invaders from the island. <clears throat> all right. So here is our spirit presence. It begins uh, in a wetland area. Obviously, we're kind of a water spirit. And we need to spread that uh, influence, spread that presence. All right, the invader card progression is shown at the top of the screen. They flip over the card if the invader deck and explore there. So um, they have added a card here and it's gonna flip over. It's gonna say, all right, jungle, good. The invaders will explore the jungle. So they have a city in an area that is adjacent to both jungle spaces. So they're gonna push 
people out of the city and explore into the jungle. Now that card advances so that the next time they activate, they're going to build in the jungle. All right, but we get to take an action. So the AI is a little slow to activate because they actually don't take a ravage and build phase their first turn, and then they don't take a ravage phase their second turn either. Um, and once they start getting cards out here, we'll know where they're going to build and where they're going to ravage. So uh, they're talking about your spirit summary here, which we already looked at. That's this big card here. This in a physical game, you would have this card out in front of you. All right. First thing you do is choose a growth option. So here they are. Um, when it is your turn to do this, you don't have to click on this card to choose them. This pops up, which is nice. Um, and you would normally get the choice of all three of them. They're giving us advice to do this one in, in the center here. So we're gonna add presence. And to add presence, we're gonna take tokens off of our board and add them to the island spreading our influence spreading our presence but depending on what track we choose is going to change how we're going to be able to take actions in the future so and it's telling us here that we can add presence in a land that is one away from our existing presence so here are the two tracks your energy per turn right now we just have one energy to spend on cards and here is the amount of cards um, we can play. So if you want to be able to have more energy per round or more cards you can play around, depends on which one of these two tokens here we're going to spread our presence with. So it's suggesting this one and we want to just click and hold and drag and drop right there. And so now uh, we will gain two energy per turn instead of one. Um, so, and that's indicated by this plus two. Energy gained per turn is then stored up here. If you don't use it, you can save it for the next round, but this means every turn we're gonna get two added to our bank. All right. And then um, the bottom presence track is for card plays. The more, move from, the more you move remove from this track, the more power cards you can play each turn. So I'm guessing it's gonna tell us, yep, to spread this one and we're gonna spread here. Remember, we had to put our influence one away from current influence, but since we placed this one in the mountain region, we were able to place this one in the wetlands. And um, anytime we place presence in the wetlands, we get that additional power. Um, it basically counts as having two presence in that area. For That's our special power for that spirit. All right, um, so now we have chosen our growth. We now gain our energy, which we know is gonna be plus two. And she's just covering all that. And now we get to choose um, which power cards we're gonna play. So we have four in our hand to choose from. And we can double tap or hold on a power card uh, to see it in detail. So here is boon of vigor now something very important to pay attention to is a the speed of the card this red bird means it's going to play before the ai does before the invaders do a blue turtle is slow and it's going to play after the invaders do also these symbols along the left out of all the cards you choose to play will accumulate and um depending on how many symbols you have each round means you might be able to play your superpowers of your spirit. And we'll see that here in a minute. But There's Boon of Vigor. Um, if you target yourself, gain one energy. If you target another spirit, you gain one. So this is just giving you an energy. It's free to play. But remember, I can only play two cards, but it doesn't cost any uh, energy. Here is Flash Floods. This is gonna cost me two energy. Uh, I can do one damage. If target land is coastal, it's plus one damage. So I would do this before the AI plays, and I would basically get to remove a invader or a city or, you know, damage a city or a town or something like that. Here is River's Bounty. Again, this is free to play. Uh, this I can gather up to Dahan and move them to an area. Uh, if they're now, if I 
have two Dahan at least in that area, I get to add one and gain one energy. And last but not least, I can move, I'm not damaging, but I can move up to three soldiers or towns. So I can push them into an area where maybe I can do a ton of damage, say next round, or I can push them away from where they're gonna be able to easily spread. So, all right, we've taken a look at all the cards now. <clears throat> Power cards cost energy to play. Uh, for example, Flash Flood, and yep, we discussed that already. <laughs> All right, so <clears throat> tap a card on your hand to play it. It wants us to play Flash Floods and Rivers Bounty. So we're going to play Flash Floods, and we're going to play Rivers Bounty. You can see that our two energy that was here has disappeared, and our two-card limit that we're allowed to play that normally appears right here is down to zero. Um, also, you can see here that we have uh, acquired based on the these symbols here. So we got a yellow, a blue, and a green for playing Boon, or no. Yeah, this one's giving us a yellow and a blue. This one's giving us a yellow, and a blue, and a red. We needed a yellow and two blues in order to do our first level of massive flooding, which is gonna allow us to um, push one thing. So, all right. So she has talked about how it all costs us energy. We can only play two cards right now, even though we could afford Boon of Vigor. We are ready to move on to uh, playing those cards. All right, so this is the fast phase. The red bird, you'll see we've entered that phase, so all of our cards that have the red bird on it, we get to play now. Fast powers are marked in red and act before invaders. All right, slow powers are marked, slow powers are marked in blue and will act after the invaders act. We played one fast, flash floods. All right. So, Flash Floods can target any land that's within range one of a land with our presence. I've highlighted all the target uh, possible lands. So, uh, basically everything here to the right side of the island. Let's just take a look at that. Here we go. Here is the speed. Here is the range. And the range is always from a land you have presence. And you can target any land. Okay? So, that's basically all she's saying. Let's target the Inland Jungle with the Lone Explorer drag from Flash Flood to the Inland Jungle to use it on that land, okay? So I'm gonna click on Flash Flood here and basically drag it. It is a nice little uh, visual effect that you wouldn't normally get in the game. Normally you would just say, all right, you kind of tap that card and do the damage to that one person. All right, that means that they're not gonna be able to build in that jungle area because we got rid of that person, which is nice. We know they're building in the jungle the next round. Um, once an invader has taken damage equal to their health, they're destroyed. Explorers have one health, towns have two, cities have three. Um, we're basically just reiterating all of this stuff. <laughs> all right, so here again, she is reiterating that we destroyed the invaders in that land, so they will be unable to build there this turn, which we know they were going to build in the jungle. <laughs> there are no more fast powers for us to play because River's Bounty is a slow speed one, and so is our massive flooding. You can see the blue turtle there, so the invaders get their turn now. All right, so they want to build in the jungle. We at least removed one of them. So they're only going to build in this spot, okay? Next, the invaders will flip over the card, and they will explore. So we don't ever know where they're going to explore. That's going to be the surprise for us. Um, whoops. So they want to explore mountains. So they already had someone in the mountains, but they and they have a city here adjacent to the mountains, so they can explore that way. Now everything's gonna shift over. So we know next turn, 
after we have played our fast powers, they're going to ravage in the jungle, then they're going to build in the mountains, and then they're going to explore somewhere. All right, they are done, so now we get to take care of our blue powers. Let's start with River's Bounty. It can target any land within range zero of our presence. All right. Using your slow powers, just like uh, using fast powers, drag River's Bounty to this inland mountain. Okay, it wants us to use it here. River's Bounty allows you to gather Dahan. Gathering lets you move pieces from adjacent lands into targeted lands. All right. <clears throat> All right, so it's wanting us to tap this guy and this guy. So we move those in. Now we're going to get the bonus of getting a third Dahan and an extra power, which just appeared right here, or energy. All right. Um, massive flooding is now part of our innate powers. Any powers will use the same way as power cards. Drag your massive flooding to the coastal jungle. All right, it's got to be within range of one of a presence. This is one. And we can push uh, an invader. So we know that the invaders, not the towns, but the invaders are going to ravage in the jungle. Um, so we're going to push everybody out of the jungle. Oh, no, maybe not. Okay. All right, at the end of every turn, all played power cards are discarded. Your innate powers expire, but you may be able to activate them again next turn. All right. So now we only have Wash Away and Boon of Vigor at our disposal unless we do the growth where we reclaim our cards. All right, so we're going to grow again. And here you can see they're going to go ahead and have us add presence again. Um, this would be the one where we get all our cards back, but it wants us to do this one. So it's saying it wants us to add presence here, and it wants us to add presence here again. So we're going to go ahead and double up already in this coastal sands region. Now that having double, you can see the star effect around it, this is considered a sacred site. So both my wetland areas and this coastal sands area are sacred sites. Okay. All right, we've finished growth. We can now play up to three cards per turn, but we only have two left in hand. Tap both of them to play. All right. So we are going to play these two. We, again, triggered based on these colored icons here, two blue and one yellow. We gained our innate ability, Massive Flooding, again. You can see here how close we were to filling up the second and third rows. Yep, she's telling us all that again. <clears throat> All right, let's finish playing our cards. We get to play our fast card now. So what are they going to advise us to do? Boon of Vigor targets a spirit, not a land. It grants one energy when you target yourself, even more if you target another spirit. In this game, you are the only spirit. Drag Boon of Vigor to the summary panel. So we're going to target us by doing this. Now the invaders phase. All right, so we know they're going to ravage. Um, since we push the town away, there's only the explorer, but there's also the Dahan here. So they're going to fight in a way, but we got rid of the town. Explorers always deal one damage. <clears throat> but the Dahan have two health, so the damage did not destroy them. They fought back and dealt two damage to the invaders in the land. So Dahan actually 
defeated back the invaders. That's why we moved the three Dahan into this region earlier because they're going to help take on these guys. And you flip over the Dahan to indicate that they have been uh, damaged. All right, if two or more damage is dealt to a land, Blight is added there. This time the land only took one damage, so no Blight was added. The one damage is simply ignored. The other jungle we removed everybody from, so nothing happens there. Now they're going to build in the mountains, which is unfortunate because they're going to get a city in this interior mountain range. And here, out here, they're going to build a town. And last but not least, they're going to invade, so we flip over a new card. And they are going into the wetlands, so we know they can easily make it to the two wetlands from where they are. And then everything is going to move, so we know they're going to be ravaging in the mountains, building in the wetlands, and exploring somewhere. All right, now we get to use Wash Away. It's saying um, we can limit the damage in the mountains next turn, pushing away invaders, drag to use wash away in the inland mountains. Okay, it wants us to use it right here. And it wants us to push these guys up into here. Okay. And now we get to use massive flooding. Top right wetland. Okay. So we're going to push him into the sands because we know at least nothing is happening in the sands other than possibly exploring. Okay. So you can see we have no cards left. Uh, we have four cards in our discard pile. We can th play three cards at a time. We have seven cards that we can add down the road. Um, here is your discard pile. So we're going to have to do the reclaim growth option. So we get all of our cards back. We get a new card drawn from our stack of um, power cards that we can add. And what was that last option? Oh, and just simply gain energy. So we gained one energy. All right. Okay, so they're saying you can set up your deck to be the power progression deck where you basically you seed your deck to begin with and so you kind of know what you're gonna be getting next or you can do it where it's randomly shuffled and you never know what you're gonna get. Okay, so it wants us to play Flash Floods. All right. Flash Floods, Rivers Bounty, and Uncanny Melting. All right. So this gave us enough tokens that we um, were able to get all the way here to the second one. Second level. So we'll see that here in a little bit. It is still a slow power. All right, so moving on to fast powers. We know they're going to ravage in the mountain range. And it wants to target... on the coastal mountain range, okay? So, boop. You can divide it amongst the invaders and the target lane as you wish. Towns have two health and deal two damage. If we deal two damage to this town, we'll destroy it and keep the land safe during the ravage step. So we're gonna go boom and then boom a second time to get rid of the town. 
All right. And now that we have destroyed a town, we have generated fear. So we actually like fear because the invaders, we want the invaders to fear us. So when we have accumulated four fear here, we're actually going to get to claim one of these cards here. talk more about that here in a minute okay so that was our only fast card we got to play now let's move on so the lone explorer is going to go to war with the dahan it flips one over but we get it back no blight added and then over here uh, the city it will deal three damage so let's watch what happens it's going to deal basically two to a dahan and then one to the next one um Okay, so it did two or more damage. We have to add a Blight. So the Blight removes our presence, but the Dahan fight back and destroy the city, and so we gained two fear for destroying a city. All right, now they're building in the wetlands. to explore in the mountains. Push someone back there, and it really doesn't matter where they come from. We see that there are towns adjacent to the wetlands. All right, so next turn they'll be ravaging the wetlands, building in the mountains, and exploring somewhere. Okay, so uncanny melting. It's gonna generate fear and remove blight. Let's just take a look at the card here. Slow speed, range one from a double presence, not just any presence, but a double presence. Target any land. If invaders are present, they gain one fear. And if target land is a sands or a wetland, we get to remove one blight. Nifty little card. So um, it wants us to use this right here. Boom, we generated our fourth fear and we got rid of the blight. Okay, next turn, before the invaders act, the earned fear card will be flipped over and resolved. Okay, so we are two more fear cards. We'll have reached tear level three, and we'll meet an easier win condition. Instead of removing everybody, we'll just have to remove, say, all of the towns and all the cities. All right, so it wants to use Rivers Bounty um, on the Coastal Sands. So we're just gonna drag this guy and this guy over. That's gonna give us a third one, plus an energy. Massive flooding here. It's dealing more damage, so we're going to use it to destroy the town. And boom. Again, we generated more fear in the process. <clears throat> and since it's an upgraded ability, it's going to let us push up to three explorers or towns. Um, it says we could push away the explorer, but remember what happens. This explorer is going to go against the Dahan, and uh, the Dahan will end up finishing it off. So actually not going to push anybody. We're going to leave everybody here. All right. So it took our cards. And now we get to decide <coughs> what our growth is going to be. So we're going to actually add a third card. We'll be able to play all three and add presence at a plus two. So here's our card. And then here we can add presence. Where does it say on the inland mountain range? Okay, so back here where we lost presence due to the blight. All right, we can play all three. Boom, 
because we've got plenty of energy. We can play up to three cards per turn. So there we go. We again earned massive flooding, only the first layer. So you can see we're just going to be pushing. And now fast cards. You can also see just by looking down here that Boon of Vigor and Nature's Resilience have red uh, borders because they're fast. Wash Away has blue borders. So it's slow. So I'm going to use Boon of Vigor on myself. That's just going to give me an energy. And Nature's Resilience. So let's look at this again. This is Defend 6. If you have 2, you may instead remove 1 Blight. So, um, and it has an Elemental Threshold, 1 away from any place that we have Double Presence in. So it wants us to use this right here to get rid of that blight. And instead of defend six, we want to remove one. So we needed to make that choice. And now we're going to get to flip over that fear card. So uh, we are at fear level one. So each player removes one uh, from an inland land. And we can remove and explore from inland land. It's going to ravage in the wetlands. So I'm assuming I'm going to explore from the inland mountains. We can prevent the invaders from building there this step. Okay, so I guess the Dahan are going to take care of this guy. So they want to remove that guy. That makes sense. They know what they're doing. Okay, so here we are ravaging step. It's just kind of going by quickly which is nice once you get to know the game, you can speed all this up and it can go pretty fast. All right, so they're just building here because we removed this guy and now they're exploring in the sands, okay? So lots of people in the sands now, boom and boom. And everything shifts. All right, slow powers. We can clear the inland sands and prevent a build there next turn. Use your powers to push all the invaders to the central wetlands. Remember, you have multiple powers to use. All right, so wash away is going to push up to three, and massive flooding is going to just push one. So, yeah. One, two, three... I gotta tell it where to go. Whoops. And then it wants us to use this one here as well. Obviously, you're the only one that's gonna go here. Okay. So, back to the growth phase. We obviously need to get our cards back. We're gonna gain another one. So we got Pull Beneath the Hungry Earth. Lots of energy now. So it's suggesting these three cards. And we accumulated enough of the right color tokens in order to get the second level of uh, massive flooding. So we're going to be able to do two damage or push. All right. Um, we are ready to play cards so we can play flash flooding. Where are we going to play? Uh, flash flood on the coastal mountain to deal damage there. All right. Destroying the town. Boom, boom. Now remember the Dahan are going to go up against, we destroyed the town, so we got more fear. All right, so now they're going to try and ravage, go up against the Dahan, but the Dahan are uh, victorious. Then they're going to build. They only have influence in one sands territory, 
So you can see how as we're moving them around based on knowing where they're gonna ravage and build, we can kind of control uh, their actions, which this is the whole thinky part of the game. All right, now unfortunately they are exploring all the coastal lands, which is a pretty brutal card, <clears throat> but at least one of those we already had people in, so. All right, that means they're also going to build in every coastal land and then ravage in every coastal land the following turn. All right, Pull Beneath the Hungry Earth has two conditional effects. What are they? Range one, target any. If target land has our presence, one fear and one damage. If target land is a sands or wetlands, one additional damage. So we are, I'm assuming, going to be use your power on the coastal sands. Yep. So it's saying to go here, we are generating a fear, and it wants us to, to destroy the two towns. So. Okay. So we used our two slow powers to get rid of the two towns. Um, I don't think we want to push, do we? Leave the explorers there. We have a trick up our sleeve. All right. Having more Dahan is always good, especially in the central location where you can, where they can be pushed or gathered from us. Use River's Bounty on the central wetland area. Okay. Bring in two Dahan from the inland mountains since there are no invaders there. All right. So boom. We got lots of Dahan now there. Alright, at this point we have lots of energy, not much to do with it. Choose the third growth, gain a new power card. Here we go. Accelerated rot. Okay. We got a major power. Okay. These are generally more powerful than minor powers we have been relying on, but also cost more energy to use. Very expensive. Um... Uh, Accelerated Rock can do a whopping 9 damage. Major powers have a drawback. Once you gain them, you must forget a power card to make room for them. All right, forgetting a power means you don't have access to it anymore. You can forget any power, including from your discard pile or major power you just gained. So it's saying we are going to forget nature's resilience. tapping on it oh tap any power to forget except nature's resilience all right let's do boon of vigor all right we're going to add our presence wherever we'd like uh, let's add it Out of here. That way we have doubles everywhere we need to reach. Alright, we need nature's resilience. Now it's your choice. Oh my goodness. So I've got what I need here. Two fear and four damage. If we have three, two, three. But are we gonna have it? Um whoops, hold on. See where oh, I want to just look at it. I guess I got double tap it. We're not going to be able to get to three yellow. I can get to two easily, but then not three green either. So I don't want to play this card yet. I want to save it. So we're going to play <clears throat> Wash Away and Uncanny Melting. <clears throat> and. We're 
going to stop there. All right. All right, so we're going to use Nature's Resilience to block uh, all of the damage that would be coming from these two invaders plus the city. That was our only fast power, so it's going to go ahead and ravage. Ooh, we got our Fear card, though. We are in level two now. So any land where they're the only invader. All right. So we got rid of you. Here comes the Ravaging. Blocks all six of their attack. Actually, only had five. We get lots of fear for that. Very nice. Now they're going to build. They've only, they're only building there. And they want to explore the jungle. So unfortunately, but that's fine. All right. There is an undo button, which is always nice. Okay, so we have a time limit of five more cards in this pile. We also, if we, this seven number represents how much blight can be put out. If that ever goes down, we lose. But if we can get one more fear here, we actually make the wind conditions easier. So here it's just telling us what's gonna happen based on current, um, Statistics, let's take a look at these. This is gonna give us a push. This is going to give us um, one damage and remove a blight, but we don't need that. And this is going to just push. And we don't want people in the coastal lands or in the jungles next turn. So push up to three. So let's wash away here. move everybody into the middle all right and then this one is um, just gaining us fear basically so we got a fear card terror level two conditions now we just have to get rid of the cities and towns and last but not least I'm going to push here so they don't build in the jungle and they're not gonna build on any coastal regions. They have nothing to ravage. They have no place to build. <clears throat> All right, so I obviously need to reclaim my cards. I guess I should have pushed them into this place to ravage up against these Dahan. But uh, at this point, I do want to play this to get a ton of damage, but I need to make sure I have, I'm gonna have the proper number of things. Ah. So I need three, two, three. Three, two, three. So I need to play, um, what else is gonna give me the right colors here? This one. And I need, Three, two, three. So I need another yellow and another green. Um, what's this one? Oh, no, I'm... 
can only play three cards a turn right now. Uh-oh. Three, two, three. I'm not going to meet my... Oh, here we go. This is a better way to do it. Three, three, two. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to get there. But let's see. Let's just see what's going to happen here. All right, so... I should have targeted a town, right? All right, we are at target level two. Each player removes two or one city from a land with the Han. So there we go. Ravage in the coastals, build in the jungles, and they want to explore. Ooh, a stage three card. Um, these cards have two land types, so they explore and both of them. Watch out if the invader deck runs out. They can't flip a card, you lose. Okay, so they're going to explore lots of places now. But remember, we only need to get rid of the that one town right there in order to win. And they can explore in this mountain region because it's coastal. So they come out of the water, basically. So here we go. Boom. Get some more fear. And I'm going to target you and you and you. So we have removed all the cities and towns. We have created more fear. But that's it. We were victorious because we reached that second level of terror. All we had to do was remove the cities and towns. So. We did not have to worry about all these invaders. They have nowhere to live. They're being scared off by the spirit. So instead of hiding out in the trees, they decide to make a run for it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was uh, Spirit Island. Again, it's a beautiful game. It's a really nice game because of the asymmetrical powers. Each one of the spirits plays differently. So uh, if you are up to playing two-handed, you can have a very unique game with two very different types of spirits playing off of each other and you know knowing how the invaders are going to act in their next phase and also playing your like fast power cards versus your slow power cards there's a lot to think about a lot of decisions to make uh they are tough but can be really beautiful decisions so this is one that i highly recommend and again you can download this for free and play through the tutorial and see if it's for you so uh that was spirit island the app for iOS, but I believe they also have this available for Android as well. But again, I highly recommend this for uh, solo players, but also it's a great cooperative game as well. So if you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more content like this in the future, please consider subscribing to the channel. Once again, thanks for watching. Have a great day.